Those of us who came before the Dirk came mainly to get American education and technical training. Almost all of us believed that soon or later we'll return to Ethiopia. In reality, very few of us managed to return. I've done quite a few things. Um, currently, though, um, I'm working in an organization called Ethiopian American Advocacy Group. This is an organization that was formed to increase the involvement of Ethiopians in the American political process. The reason that uh, we felt that we needed an organization like this was because Ethiopians, uh, even though they've been here for many years, uh, for almost uh, 25, 30 years, they have really been uh, on the sidelines. They have not been part of the political process. Not too many Ethiopians uh, vote and we don't have a linkage to the, uh, politi to the politicians that uh, run the city, the state, and the federal government. The first immigration, uh, I believe, started uh, back like the 50s and the 60s. And at that time, Ethiopians, even though it wasn't a lot, they came to educate themselves. And that went on until about the early 70s. Then, afterwards, after the 70s, after the mid-70s or so, until, I can even say, until up to now, the majority of Ethiopians uh, have migrated to the United States because of uh, the political situation in Ethiopia. Um, things are not good in the, uh, starting in the mid-70s. Uh, there was a military junta. And then uh, the, um, people are divided by their ethnicities. And, and um, 
jobs are rare, jobs are not found, uh, the economic uh, uh, environment is not good. So all of these things have made Ethiopians uh, migrate to, to the West. It takes quite a while for Ethiopians to adapt uh, to the American culture. Like, I, I would say like any other immigrant. Um, I don't think Ethiopians are unique uh, in that sense. We can say we're like first and second generation immigrants. And in order to adapt and be part of the melting pot is a difficult process for Ethiopians. Um, I found that women uh, adapt easier than men. This is probably because of, of the culture also. And then um, I feel uh, women are always ahead of their times and can move forward. But it, it, it has taken a little longer maybe than some other immigrant communities for Ethiopians to adapt. But then our children uh, are Americans, basically. Uh, if they're born here or if they come here when they're, uh, you know, uh, kids, uh, they're African Americans. That's basically what they are. Unless we specifically educate them uh, on our culture and our heritage, uh, there is no difference between our children and any other, uh, any other American. It does. It's the incense and the coffee that is being uh, uh, cooked. Now, is this Ethiopian coffee? Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, clo clothing. It is natural, and this is the way it is done. Oh, wow. Now, these are... Or late afternoons is when we would have the coffee ceremony. It's called the coffee ceremony. It's a big thing in Ethiopia. And for Ethiopians, having coffee or come for coffee is it takes about, uh, I would say, 45 minutes to an hour really? to go through. Religious purpose. So this store has a lot of religious artifacts in it. Yes. I mean, I see this beautiful cross. Uh -huh. This. These are spices, Ethiopian, to cook Ethiopian food. Uh -huh. And uh, there is the there food underneath. Yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. And you eat with your hands. We eat yeah. with our hands, so everybody needs to go, everybody wash hands. <laughs> <laughs> Is this one of the yes. more... Well, the challenges that have faced me personally is really adjusting. The issue of adjustment for first-generation immigrants is really not something that you can explain. Um, of course, it depends on, on each indiv individual, but then we all have different of levels of adjustments that we have to make. We come from a very, very different, any immigrant comes from a very different society. And as such, to try to assimilate or to adapt to a foreign culture is very difficult. And it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of energy, and it takes a lot of um, talking to people, understanding the culture of, of, the, of the place that you live, you live in. So, you know, the biggest challenge, I think, is really uh, the assimilation in that culture, and that, that challenge is with all immigrants. Like I said before, it's really our children that probably might not have as much of a challenge as we do in regards to assimilating in this, uh, in the American society. Ethiopians are growing. The population of Ethiopians are growing by leaps and bounds. It's amazing. In North America, it's estimated that maybe half a million Ethiopians live in North America. What is the future for Ethiopian immigrants or Ethiopian Americans? Well, it's up to Ethiopian Americans to decide what the future holds. If we feel we are part of this society, then we need to actively participate in all aspects of the society. We need to integrate. We don't have to leave our culture behind.
we can maintain and keep our culture and at the same time be part of the society that we live in and claim like you said earlier claim part of the American dream what is ours because we are contributing to the American dream there's um, in regards to the to uh, jobs or the workforce once again this also depends on on the individuals and the Ethiopian Americans that are living in the United States we have a lot of educated Ethiopians especially the um, younger generation uh, I can say that their focus in going to school is so strong it is wonderful to hear it's really wonderful. We have engineers, we have PhD holders, we have writers, we have uh, filmmakers, we have all kinds of people that are participating in the society. What we are lacking is for us to be organized and for our voices to be heard as Ethiopian Americans. We are involved on an individual basis in the society. We are contributing on an individual basis in an excellent, excellent way. What we're lacking is the organization. We need Ethiopian Americans to organize and for their voices to be heard. We need to promote ourselves. We need to show who we are and what our contributions are to the society. What I would like um, uh, non-Ethiopians to know is that Ethiopia is really not only a country where there is always famine, where there's always hungry people. Ethiopia has, is a country that has a long history, very thousands of years old, one of the most ancient countries in the history of the world with, that has made a lot of contributions to the world. I would like the world to know that. I would like the audience to know that. And another thing is, Ethiopians are very hospitable, very uh, friendly and hospitable uh, people. The country Ethiopia itself is a wonderful, wonderful country with wonderful climate, uh, the scenery, the vegetation, all that is, is so great, so wonderful. Um, one of the things that we're doing, uh, or we, we did, in fact, in, uh, with the organization that I'm affiliated with, Ethiopian American Advocacy Group, is getting the area on Fairfax Avenue, where there's a lot of Ethiopian businesses named Little Ethiopia by the Los Angeles City Council. We believe that this is a wonderful and a great achievement and a victory for Ethiopians as well as all people of color. I believe this is the first time that an area has been named for anyone of people of color in North America. This is a victory of great magnitude. It is symbolic of the impact that we are making to the society that we live in.